now we have the school board to order. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Hay. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah. Thank you all for attending this evening's yeah. work session. Yeah. Uh, we do have uh, uh, some of our building principals here. I know the principals from North and South will be here Wednesday night to honor some of their students, so they are not with us this evening, uh, Mr. Wilson and Mr. Dilla. But I have a uh, high school principal, Mr. Hutchinson. If there are any questions for Mr. Hutchinson on the board? Yeah, I do. Um, I saw the paper recently about the red ribbon um, activities. Uh -huh. And um, did you know, I've got some concerns that some of the participants in that activity have drug, recent drug convictions, but at least one of them are currently on probation. I know when they went to the high school and they went to both the middle schools, and I have serious reservations and concerns about sending people with recent drug convictions into our schools. Were you aware as an administrator that, that they were coming in with, this, with, with individuals with that type? And I wish those individuals all the, the best and, and the right. recovery. No. But I mean, you're talking about two people that as recently as six months ago have pled guilty to drug right. offenses. One's a convicted felon. The way it came out is we're working with the Prosper Group for the middle schools. Uh, the Prosper Groups re were recommended, uh, and I wasn't at that meeting. Uh, so, they recommended that uh, the sheriff was there at that meeting, and he said, for Red Ribbon Week, I would like to do this. Uh, come in, present, this, that, and the other. I got pulled out of the high school, uh, and I know the day of, probably 15 minutes before, uh, he had a family emergency, so the sheriff didn't make it to our presentation. Uh, so no, not at that time. Uh, I know he said that there was a girl that uh, recently went through uh, an addiction and, and spoke. I'm not sure if she's one of those. Uh, no, it, 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 I, the two names that I searched were the two individuals, the, the gentlemen that were in the picture from North. Um, I didn't search anybody else. I would assume they were the ones, I would assume they went to the high school as well. I, I can't answer that, but I can ask. I yeah. can check into them. Yeah. I, I mean, mo moving forward, I don't know if anybody else has the same concerns, but. I, I don't, I mean, if, I think it would have been different if you would have had 10 years of sobriety or, or something. And, and this is no disrespect to Sheriff Custer or the Reverend that was involved. And, and I, I, I know that Sheriff Custer is, is an outstanding individual. I don't know anybody else that was involved. But, I, you know, I, my concern now is that we have hundreds of kids from both middle schools and the high school that are going to think, okay, if I see these individuals out on the street, that they're okay, that's somebody that I can go communicate with. And and, and frankly, you know, the, the verdict's out, so to speak. So I, I don't know what we can do as a board to prevent this from happening again, but as a board member and as a parent, uh, you know, I've got one at the high school, one at the mm -hmm. middle school. That's not something that, that I think is a good situation to put our kids in. I strongly agree. And as the school that acts in, in local parentis with parents, uh, I don't know how many parents would be happy with the fact that there were convicted, admitted felons that were sitting possibly next to their son or daughter uh, without their knowing. I strongly, strongly disagree. Uh, I think we as a, as a district need to come up with uh, some better way of vetting who's coming uh, to do presentations to our young people. I, I can, you know, as Mr. Hutchinson stated, it was through the Prosper group that we have with our programs after school for middle school. And there was a meeting in Union Town where Sheriff Custer did offer um, we wanted to go into the schools throughout the county um, you know, letting students know that um, drugs are a, a dead end street and they did ask to come into the schools to give a presentation during Red River Week for uh, drug awareness and uh, you know, that is who that the uh, Sheriff uh, Custer and Reverend Sanders brought with them as part of their program, you know, you know, to don't fall into the trap of drugs. So I, I do understand the concern that they, they were brought into the school. Uh, and it was an assembly in the auditorium uh, at the high school as 
well as north and south, I think, in the gymnasium. You know, so uh, we certainly in the future, if there are programs of this nature coming into our schools during Red Ribbon Week, we can have uh, that conversation with the representative uh, that are bringing the program to the school to make sure we, we know who they're bringing with them as part of the program. Any other questions for Mr. Hutchinson? I'd like to share with the board that I met with uh, Mr. Mayhew and Mr. Sorella uh, regarding the uh, Adams Family uh, musicals coming up. Uh, obviously, it's a huge undertaking, and uh, with Mr. Mayhew here, uh, he can ask or answer any questions. Uh, since we're kind of overseeing the maintenance end of it, uh, they asked or they were inquiring. Uh, jump in at any time, sir, uh, to cover the in, uh, the stage floor uh, with uh, masonite. Uh, the reason being, uh, obviously, it's the Adams Family musical. Uh, they're having fall, so the fall will come out onto the stage. At times when the fall runs out on the stage, the condensation gets on the floor and it makes it slip. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, which obviously is the safety of them uh, coming out and using the uh, machine. Uh, so I'm asking you all, with your permission, if we move forward and look to uh, talking with the maintenance crew and see if we can put that down on the stage floor. I will say that it will take uh, some small screws to put in place. Uh, this has been done a number of times before. Uh, into the stage floor, and then once the stage is done for clean, obviously it's uh, stripped, waxed again, and, and, and the floor or the screws are uh, noticeable at all, uh, which would lead us to uh, using the masonite for, for the floor. This, this will provide no damage because we've spent money on this stage in the last several years. No, no, it, it's, it, it's been, they've been, it's been, screws have been in the floor before, no, it, it, won't, it won't cause any major damage. You said you talked to the maintenance crew already? I, yeah. I just talked to Mr. Maker and Mrs. Sorello today, uh, it was brought to me, and I will talk to them, uh, I will get the maintenance crew next, but I wanted to make sure if the musical was in March, uh, this is the January's uh, board meeting. I got the okay to go ahead uh, instead of wait till February to start with the uh, props. Is, is there a cost or an estimated cost to the district? No cost to the district. No. Thank you. Along with the Adams Family Musical, I believe there was, has also been a um, character breakfast that has been planned and is in the process of being planned, correct, Mr. Maykew? Correct, through the Education Foundation. There will be more information to come um, in regards to that uh, character breakfast. We did it last year, and it was a very huge success, and we wanted to uh, continue that in cooperation and collaboration with the uh, foundation. So any other questions for Mr. Hutchinson? I have a question. How did the coffee with the recent uh, college freshman get with the senior class? I'll tell you, I, I was impressed. Uh, I was impressed what we did is we had the coffee cup. Uh, we invited uh, college freshmen back to complete the first semester uh, in their first year of college uh, to speak <coughs> with those who were enrolled in attending college as a senior. Uh, it was pretty informal. We asked some questions. So, so I think it was beneficial, obviously, to us as administration at the high school, as well as the future seniors going to college, uh, from everything of just scheduling to syllabuses to uh, what they were prepared and, and what they weren't prepared for, for when they got into uh, college. So right. I think you won't What kind of detail what weren't they prepared for? I think the online piece. Uh, the colleges are moving now to uh, online learning. Uh, syllabuses following along. Uh, no one's saying this is due Tuesday, this is due uh, you know, next Thursday. So uh, the syllabus piece, the online version, was hard uh, for them to uh, adjust to. Uh, what was the biggest piece? Uh, and then what classes to get in? And a lot of them changed, uh, changed majors, so they had to sit back there. Uh, so I think preparing them and knowing them, 
them knowing what to take uh, really helped. And I, and I think the freshmen reaching out to say, hey, it's okay to ask your advisor uh, was big. A lot of, you know, I'm dating myself. When I was in college, the advisor had a little office and he was there for, or she was there for an hour or two before class. That's not the case now. You know, it's email, it's text, it's, um, so, so those were helpful hints for the uh, seniors. Obviously, I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I think I invited 20, 25, don't quote me on that, uh, or, uh, freshmen in college, and, and I only got six, seven uh, to come back. But, but to their credit, uh, they're on stage in front of, you know, 40 kids, uh, you know, questions asked. It was good. It, it was in-depth. It was in-depth for me. It was in-depth for, uh, I believe, our seniors. I think it eased the anxiety as well. You know, these, these kids are doing it. Thank you. Uh -huh. hey, hey, Jace, I got a question. Yeah. I was here Saturday for that wrestling tournament. Yeah. This place was packed. I didn't get out of here until probably 6.30 or better for a shot. This place was filled. You get clean. No. No, it's pretty bad shape. Well, I only see one guy working. And, and that's all it was. That's all we could get from the overtime piece. I, I know the garbage was, uh, we had the same problem, if you remember last year, I believe. Uh, we couldn't get anybody to take it. Uh, but I'll check on it. I know that was kind of the, that end of it because that OT shift was from 8 to 6, I believe. One guy. Uh, so I don't think, I think the majority of the things got done. Uh, Mr. Dunn, the trash being out, that, but when we walked in here today, uh, it was a mess. There was a mess when I walked out. Another thing, the janitor on that overtime, is that picked up by the boosters or is that picked up by us? And they, they get billed. The, um, they get billed. That's billed in the, the agreement. Bill yes. for the security and the overtime uh, for the custodian. Yes. Uh, I just wondered how, many, why, how one guy was going to think this. Yeah, it was. And it, the kitchen, it, it, it too. Stuff. It had to be a mess. Cafeteria. <coughs> Every day was a mess. Yeah. All right. Yep. I have uh, Mrs. Lent from the high school. Um, in regards to the your packet, you had information for uh, future business leaders at <coughs> the LA. Yes. So, Mrs. Lent. We uh, recently completed our regional competition at California University on December 6th. We are part of Region 4, which is with nine other school districts. It was a lot tougher this year. Trinity had 61 competitors, or I'm sorry, Fraser had 61. Trinity had 48, Vanessa had 43. Out of my 38 students that's in FBLA, I had 33 compete. We had 20 who placed, but 17 are going to the state competition in Hershey. Um, of those, there was 12 first place winners, so I think that shows a lot for our gallery with all of the other schools combined but we had that many winners. Um, again, we did a lot of fundraising. Um, we raised, uh, I can pay for $3,100 worth of expenses. It's over $11,000 to go. I'm asking the board for $3,300. That's usually what I ask for every year. And the students are paying $270 apiece of their own money. Last year they paid $250. The prices increased, so they're also paying $270. So again, I would just like to um, ask for any help that you can give me. These are our top students, and Billy is on their um, transcript showing the uh, Thank you. Wait, Ms. Yes. 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 When is this? This is April 5th to the 8th. We leave on a Sunday because most of the students will have competition beginning as early as 7 a.m. on Monday. So they, we do a regional bus, which is chartered through the region. Um, it's no cost to the district there, the transportation. Um, and we go to Wednesday. Where's it at again? Hershey. Hershey. Any other questions? What type of fundraising activities have you guys done? We do Joe Corby's every year. Um, we're also going to do the Appalicious um, Gourmet Apples and Pretzels, and we're talking about also doing um, the pepperoni rolls. But um, what's nice is I have a large group, and I require them to do the Joe Corby's to do just five items. And that helps the Anything else? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dupont is at the high school for the basketball game this evening. 
Are there any questions as far as athletics that I might be able to answer? I can get you an answer for Wednesday night. Um, I believe that the numbers for participants for, for the winter sports with basketball, wrestling, girls basketball, um, I believe our numbers are pretty good. Um, I can give you an exact number from Mr. DuPont for you. And as far as spring, I know baseball and softball, um, I believe they started conditioning and things, and I think the numbers for spring sports is also um, pretty strong. So if I can get Mr. DuPont to get numbers for the uh, winter and spring uh, participation. Hey, hey Chris, on our very lineman, WPIAL, did we talk down the classification uh, for next year? I do believe that we, if we were in the WPIL for football, we would be in 4A. You know, but um, I believe we are still, you know, we were in a, a two-year agreement with the school that we played last year football as, as independent. Well, I mean, well, what about our basketball and the, the, the baseball, the rest of the sports? Um, I'll have to get those answers from Mr. DuPont. I don't know if he has all of the answers for every sport as to their classification. Right. But I think everything... Um, I don't believe so. It stayed the same. It remained the same. We're right. on the off three or four kids. It, it remained the same. And all football pulled in and put us for the non in. I mean, as a listing, I believe so. Um, with maintenance, um, I do have uh, Janine Minucci here, and I believe I see a rep representative from Carlisle. Uh, in regards to the uh, roof project for Smithfield Elementary, um, in your packet, there was information and in regards to the uh, request for K2 to do a bulleted point for, for a roof over. And according to uh, Mrs. Benucci, there was only one company that would give a, um, that were interested in bidding on a roof over, which was Carlisle. The other companies were not interested in giving a bid for a roof over, so the recommendation was to, uh, for Smithfield, was for a complete tear off with a new roof according to the specs that Mrs. Benucci and K2 had given us last month. So I believe I did include that in the packet. Um, I'd like to open it up for questions for Mrs. Benucci uh, and the board. I, I have more comments on the question. It, it, we were just given that the, the big specifications that were given to us last month were given to us on the spot. And in hindsight, I appreciate uh, Mr. Dunn right down to comments about me. This is a serious matter. We need to take some time to think about this. Because upon a thorough review of that, those big specifications are almost identical to what Garland had originally proposed. They're, therefore, we're going to go back to what we discussed meetings ago and totally take out of the equation what the board, I think, was trying to do, which was to seek other alternatives. So I mean, my, my, uh, my issue with those specifications is it's exactly what Garland had proposed. And I think that, that even in the audience, the representative from Garland said that he was part of drafting those specifications. So it just seems like we're back kind of and doing away with the other options. Well, well Terry, there, there was a difference in the money, so it was a couple hundred thousand dollars between Garland and, and a couple of bids, or a couple of prices that we brought in. Garland was higher. Garland was the highest, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a couple underneath of that also. Correct. So the big specifications that were presented to us last month, that were given to us on advance of the meeting, that had the meeting, are, are identical to what Garland, or almost identical to what Garland originally proposed. So those cheaper options would not be options if we voted as a board to go with the specifications that were provided to us last month. So if you want, if you want Carlisle to give you a bid based on what they talked about before, we go with these other specifications. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but then that would take uh, Carlisle out of the equation. And, I, and frankly, that's not something that. Go ahead, please. I well, I brought a packet that I 
you know, and, and I respect the, what the Chief's trying to do also is look, look out for your best interests. And, and by the way, this is Eric Geis. He, we're so, he works with the car out there. And what, when we were brought in this, uh, you know, what you guys needed to do, we, we submitted a, uh, we thought, a, a viable option to, to work with the school to keep everything moving forward. Now, again, you know, doing a couple of off, that is, there's nothing, that's totally acceptable. We, we, we love to do that. Jeanine, we talked last meeting um, openly uh, about her being included in, in this process. Um, I respectfully um, look at it a different way. I think, you know, what we prepared at the original meeting and, uh, and what we proposed, we still think that's a viable option for you. And I, I, I respect Jeanine's position, but there be, there be things taken into consideration with Carlisle, and we do this, we, we do this system a lot. We, we do it throughout the country, um, and uh, you know. But I do have, I do, I did prepare through my through our contractor uh, a total tariff for a 20 and 30 years. I would like to give the board to Mr. Pay, um, and I'll give you that, give the rest of the board packets of, of the information about the 20 and 30 years people offer also as a total tariff. Now. In saying that, um, the specification that Jeanine prepared, um, there's still some a couple of different um, uh, in, in fees that we have to clear up. The, in her, in what Mr. Pegg sent me um, last week, Jeanine still had in her proposal for you to have a, a average R30. That is incorrect. This the code the codes in Pennsylvania now are minimum R30. Now, if you would, you know, and I prepared the quote as that minimum R30, four feet up the drain line, so they ask it what the, the roof drains are. Um, so that, that's the biggest, that's the biggest, you know, consideration there with the tariff. Now, depending on what the code official in, in, in this area would want, we, that would reduce it. The average, when I say minimum R30, that's five, that's 5.2 inches off the drain line. Now, if that equates on this on this project to an R45 point something as an average R. Now, if we move that down to an average R30, that that average R probably would be reduced to about, I'm not sure, it would probably be 20, the low 20s or even the teens for the average R to that system. So that's something that I think the board has to uh, recognize See which way they want to go. Um, the only other, the only other thing that, that, that I came up with, uh, that, that Jeanine put together for you guys, uh, on the metal, um, with the manufacturers that we deal with, with the space size of the metal, we would be an 050 material for the roof edges because of the face. Um, otherwise, um, there could be some um, possibility of, of oil canning. On for the fascia and the extender can be a different a different thickness of metal and there's some other coping up there too. Um, but I think uh, after that, uh, I think everything else was pretty pretty clear. Um, she did end up replacing the range. Um, we proposed it that way too. But our contractor who came with me. The initial bid that we so everything I think is, is in this packet and the pricing that we have to give you tonight. And, and as far as the um, I, I do have a price still in, in this packet with this with this quote for the overlay system too. If, if you if you so desire to just still look at that 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 aspect of it. Um, moving backwards to that, um, we are you know we would definitely you know. In the proposal, there's 300, probably 340 squares in that school. We have 10 percent of it as removal, so that's 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 a that's a really a, a big chunk of, of that product to, to take out that we feel is going to be wet. We would scan that roof, a thermal scan, to to show what is wet and what needs removed. Um, as far as um, any 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 loose. Um, 
fasteners or anything, they would be re, re engaged, um, or taken out and removed and replaced. And we are we would be putting the pack I gave you the first time, um, we did uh, propose to put in the, in, in the quote um, adding paper insulation along the long perimeter perimeters to enhance the paper to the drain lines. So because there is a uh, if there is some water up there that needs to be moved back. Um, again, we, uh, I also indicated that we, we just got done with the project up in the and back. Um, if you'd like, um, we have the uh, facility director's phone number you can call, or I'm sure you can find it very easily, and I think you could ask him how that project, project went. If you need a referral, a local referral. Was that a roof over or was that a total replacement? That was a, that was a roof over. Oh, okay. Exactly what we were, gonna, we were proposing the original uh, spec. So, um, yeah. and that was approximately 400 plus squares. That's cool. So, uh, uh, again, Carlisle, you know, and, and I think Eric, Eric can, can also add a little bit to I just can't say when, when Carlisle and Joe were first contacting him. Yeah. I believe they are, the school district is looking for some value-added solutions, and that's what Joe has done. Joe's been here three times. It's his third meeting. We're just trying to give you some options. It's ultimately your decision. It's what you want to do. Um, but we would not be proposing the um, you know, over, overlay if we didn't feel it was a good solution for you. And backed by a manufacturer of, of Carlisle's staff. Um, I have a question for you in regards to the insulation. What's the comparison of the insulation that was on that roof previously compared to what we have today? Is there, is, it's no, not you, the same. You did it for on the original. You're saying what, what's up there now? What's up there now compared to what's available today? Well, the insulation was, is there now. Uh, you can still buy it as, as a, as a uh, uh, system. Um, this is not as a. Uh, Let's say in regards to water, you know that's what I taught school for a living. But however, being a school teacher back in the day, you know if you didn't have an extra job, and I used to do a lot of construction, a lot of roofing, and as soon as I heard somebody say something about the insulation getting wet, I'm thinking of the new insulation that they make right out the roof. Is that right. indeed what you use? At a hundred panel, at the hundred. That's what's, that's for the terawatt. Who would be a hundred panel? Product? That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's the new. That's How does that compare to the old? The old, the old is, was still made. You know that the insulation of the house is called uh, expanded polystyrene. Uh, that was a very common material because uh, it held its thermal value, and then there was an overlay board called fiberboard on top of that. Okay. Again, that was a very common common material they used. And how does that how does that relate to water? Well, it, it, it's performed it's performed very well as long as the water is good. Any insulation right. any insulation gets no, no, wet. I'm talking about the board also. Well, the board, the board anything that gets wet is not a good thing. Okay, so well, plywood is a lot better than particles. Sure. And if you do a roof over and you have that wood underneath, well, let's say compared to the particle board. And by chance, you just get the wrong type of wind, you're down to zero again. But what my question is, in doing a little research on it, I was in, under the impression that the old stuff was more like styrofoam, which is more... What's, it's, uh, it's expanded polystyrofoam. It's like your, like your styrofoam cups. So you're telling me the old stuff and the new stuff is the same thing. It's not the same thing. No, it's, it's, it's in relation to water. In, in relation to water, water is going to absorb into that eventually. If it was isocyanidin, or if it's going to be the expanded polystyrene, water can absorb into that. But that's what a thermal scan would would indicate if, if there's bad areas out there. And I'm sure there is going to be some bad areas because you've got some. Things. And that's my, the idea my, that my second question in in line of the first question is the fact that. We have a company right out the road that's been in our school district, and I haven't found out yet. I've, I've contacted several people, and they're in originally in what's called the Keystone Opportunity Zone, which they have not paid taxes for quite a few years. And 
I thought about, and I'm sure ran out of time, going out and proposing to them that they've been here for how many years in our district? Could they possibly consider donating to our school district that's in bad shape financially the styrofoam that they make right here? And I've got two contractors that will call it for me for zero cost. And you're only talking, what, three miles? As a matter of fact, I worked for one of them for several years after I retired, hauling this stuff around to different schools. That's what made me think about, you know, hey, maybe they will. Now, if your company would get the contract, would you go along with letting them supply that at no cost? Well, it would be at no cost, but in, in that, in the, in the, no, no, I'm saying, in the quotes that we've given you, um, no. that's how it kind of uh, circled back to me and Eric in here and look at the school district, there is consideration in the pricing for insulation. That we, we so there's a set price for that insulation that if these people would indeed donate that part of it, that amount would be scratched right off. It's, it's in the pricing that I gave. Okay. It is already so. But I'm saying you would delineate that. Yes. It, it already okay. has it on the pricing that I gave. Good. Yes. I have a question. Um, further on in our agenda, Mr. Belsick is going to uh, present some financing, uh, project financing options. Uh, if, and I, I haven't talked to Vince, so I don't know what his presentation is going to include, but if that includes refinancing the bond, which would be probably the only way that we're going to financially be able to do that. Uh, would we in the long run save money by refinancing the bond one time and taking care of all of the roofing issues that we may have in the district instead of doing one building now and in two years doing another building? Are you aware of the condition of the other buildings in the district. I know that some some have been partially uh, uh, worked on in the last few years, but but overall, so if if we get to the point where we're going to have to refinance the bond, uh, can you tell us you know your opinion of the? We can certainly we can certainly. Thanks to the evaluation of the roofing system. And again, I don't know if Eric said it, but I was passing the facts out but I'm not just here for Smithville. I'm here, I'd like to move forward with Al Dalvin and help, help the school district move forward with uh, Carlisle and, and, uh, and looking forward to doing that if possible. If you choose to use the CoStar program we just told you about, you have a choice of, of the quote and the brand new job. Proposal and the contractor that you choose. We also like uh, the manufacturer to mean something to you too. Not just the company that's standing behind the warranty, but the local representation too. That once a proposal, the Carlisle proposal is selected, our job is not done. It's just to get to make sure you have good roof. Are are you familiar with the general overall condition of the building? No, I've only seen. Um, Carla's been working with you on that as a manufacturer, and I've only seen the report for the group. I haven't seen the report for the entire district. But um, just to comment on a couple of things, our bullet point list, um, we did not work in any way with Carla for that. It's just our relationship with the district. We were asked for our opinion about your roofing project. These are standard things we would specify <coughs> if we were hired to do the roofing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about it. I spoke somebody that I trust who was in the audience at that last meeting indicated that he asked Mr. Roberts from Garland and he said yes, he in fact had a role in, in offering those specifications. So if there was confusion on my part, uh, you know, it came from an individual who, who I trust uh, very much. Well, he, he authorized his own specifications in the report that was provided to the district. But the bullet list is just a list that we prepared and it's standard what we would do on the Project. And would you agree that it, it almost mirrors what Garland presented? 
I don't really know what Garland is at. I saw the report. So and the thing that concerned me about all the reports is that they weren't they weren't clear about edge metal, they weren't clear about blocking, they weren't clear about cleaning out your roof drains. Those things weren't all spelled out specifically. They were just giving some advice. And I just didn't want people to come back and say, oh well, we want more money to replace this roof drain, we want more money to this roof blocking is rusty or rotted or we want more money to protect rust. Just to protect you guys. One of my biggest concerns. So, one, one clarification, Janine. So, in your mind, the information that the board was presented at the last meeting is not sufficient mm -hmm. to make. A I'm not privy to that information. They passed those out to you. I'm not doing what they're handing you. You know, I'm just giving you a list of what we would. You know, as an architectural engineering firm, if you had hired us to do that roof, those are the things we would want to see on the roof. You know, if we were going to be drawing some specifications and bid that thing out in the marketplace, that's that's what we would specify for your for your roof project. But I'm not. I haven't seen Darwin's price or I haven't seen that price. I have seen Miller's price because they keep sending it to me and I keep giving it to Mr. Uh, Peck, but that's not the price. I, I must I must have misunderstood uh, the comments in in uh, your report to the board. Okay, thank you. But I don't disagree with anything that Janine has in her in her list here. I think it is pretty basic, and, and there might have been a couple of differences that was, I, I had a scope from the original. I didn't pull mine out, but it was pretty, it was pretty close to Janine's. Now, you know, like the roof drain, you had to replace the roof drain. You know, we had it for replacing the rain to the and the lid. And the Need to replace you know, there was a price in there to change that drain. So I think we're all we're on the same yeah, page right here. I mean, we just kind of disagree a little bit with the overview. So yeah. one company wasn't getting a really low number and it wasn't including all of the things that the other company would So my biggest yeah. concern is that we do not draft the specifications in such a way that we are limiting who can bid or what company can bid because they're the only company that has access to a particular material or particular whatever. <coughs> so the way that the special have you seen the specifications? And I, I'm not, I, I, I would be happy if 20 different companies bid this. So to me, it's not Garland versus Carlisle. I just want to make sure that the specifications are drafted, that we're going to have more than one company that's, that has a monopoly on the bidding. And again, with through co-stars, okay, it, it, when you say bid, it's different than a quote. Okay, a co-star is goes from quotes. If you, you know, if you want to get more quotes through co-star and Carlisle, I can provide that for you. I can bring down two, three other, other roofers to do that for you. Um, uh, so, so just so I'm clear, so right, right now the way specific specifications are written, we would be able to get other co-star quotes. Well, well, we, well, through through Carlisle, for yes. me, yes, yes, yes you did. So is it a matter? Or Carol. Okay. So is it a matter of um, it, the way they're written? A, we wouldn't even be able to consider the, the roof over. That's what I'm hearing first off, right? Well, again, that's that's something that the board, board has, to, has decide. to decide if we want to go that way or not. We, okay. And again, we we have many many squares out there doing it this way, and, and, and again, respectfully disagree with Janine, and, and I think you respect that too. Um, and that's fine. It's, it's, it's our opinion, right. rather than you know, you're putting okay, you're spending a lot of money on this roof. Right. Experts you know, either way, right. if time. you do the roof right. over, if you don't do the roof over, you're spending a lot of money. So then, my son getting an old roof to a roof, no way. You're getting a 20 year warranty. So, so a warranty isn't the same thing as the quality of the roof that goes on. The warranty guarantees you that if something leaks or blows off, that they'll help you. It doesn't guarantee you that it won't happen. The likelihood of a, of a, of a new roof leasing is a lot less than the old roof. And, and I have other questions about that, but I want to I want to just go back to the specifications real quick. The way the specifications are written, if the board would decide to go with the total roof over, on roof over, are there things in that specification that you believe um, would require um, additional costs or, or cost the district more money than some other alternative? 
that's being excluded from the specifications. Like what you were talking about, to be honest, some of the stuff's terminology is over my head with respect to the R factor and all that good stuff. But right. so, so is there something that you would change in those specifications if we were doing a total roof over? Or, or roof over? I, don't, I don't believe so. There might be some little, little <coughs> things here and there, but I think that's always, you're always going to have something that's unforeseen, unfortunately, with any of these projects. Uh, but it, it's, I think, what I what I we went through here and what we quoted the, the project off of, um, I, I think it was you know pretty much covered. I mean, I I, I feel I feel I felt comfortable with it. It kept you know again a couple of the, a couple of things like insulation and, and the metal. Uh, so added. just to speak to the insulation, I did talk to the local code inspector, and the the code is a little gray on an existing roof roof over because it's an existing building, so it falls under the existing building code, and you're not required to meet the energy code. Now, some municipalities require that in an existing building, but I asked this one, he said he will not, he'll prevent a um, laboratory. It okay, was you're that best leaving the membrane on. If you remove the membrane... If you remove the membrane, he was okay with that. Then I need to, I need to yeah. revive that price. That's, gonna, that's a game changer. That's going to lower that price. Who was the local code enforcement officer that you spoke to? Uh, Gary Oak. He'll be the one that will issue the... Uh, does the Middle Borough doesn't have their own code enforcement? Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you positive of that? We have, we yeah. have a code enforcement. Oh. You have a code enforcement officer in the county code? For the Uniform Construction Code, K2. Okay, thank you. Nice to know. So, uh, just... With respect to Ms. Benucci's email that, that was given in our board packet, there were some concerns. Uh, the two biggest ones that, that I'd like to just ask a question about is um, she indicated that we might not be able to get a building permit if we can't guarantee the uplift rating on the roof. Is that something that if I we do I, a roof sure over? Where it came from. I don't, I didn't really understand. So do you believe that's an issue? I, I don't know where. I never saw that. Okay. So um, I don't know where that came from, but I, I don't know. They don't have to guarantee that but because of a, a roof system for all its uplift ratings, it's tested as a system, not on a roof. It's tested as a system in a lab, you know, in testing chambers, things like that. And, and so it's a warranted system, you know, to go over a existing roof. They'll just have to provide documentation to the code office that it applies, and if it does, they'll get a permit. I can't guarantee that. There's nothing in there. The roof zone is tested, it's already there. I can't test something that it's already That's why I'm saying that. But I don't think that would stop it getting it. So or we need to get to a point where we can evaluate these options in dollars and cents. Well, and, I, and with our strategic goals, I feel like we're getting bogged down in any really details right now. Well, I do have one more question about the warranty. <coughs> so, so, the, so there was questions in the email, too, about the warranty. Can, can you, so if, if we would do the roof over, um, leave the existing membrane there, do the roof over, and there would become leaks, and it's not working as good as what we had hoped, um, what does your warranty do for us? And I know that there's a legal document in here that I've had a chance to, to go over with it. Well, we're going to support a top leak. So there's no warranty that if it goes inside the building, there's no warranties that cover consequential damage. That would be up to your insurance company. Um, we stop the water when they put it in. It's not, you know, hit a computer. That would still be back on your, on your insurance company like anybody. So it's not a matter of you, if you guys say, oh, okay, the leak's on you, you fix it, here's some money. You guys come and physically do the repairs? The contractor is responsible for the first two years himself, and then Carlisle picks up the remainder. But again, it comes down to yeah, we're going to inspect that roof. Uh, this is a very thorough job in doing that. Uh, we don't anticipate, you know, our warranty fund, I have a warranty fund in the packet, on both packets I think we can do. And our warranty fund is in excess of $215 million. And that, that shows something over that. I mean, we, we put on, so, you know, the last, you know, we've been selling EPM for about almost 60 years. Um, we put over 19 billion square feet on So I think we found the proven entity here to say it comes to Bangor. I think we're a, a leader, actually, you know, a leader in the 
Well, I think if Janine's correct, if she wants, if it's, it's an hour to hour 30, yes, that would definitely, definitely change. It would lower the price from, from the, uh, the minimum mark. First of all, my, my comment, we're, we're looking at possibility of hundreds of thousands of dollars difference from, from one uh, roof system to the other. Uh, so I, I think it behooves the board to, to make the best financial decision that we can make I because uh, when we redo a bond issue, it's not for three or four years, it's for an extended period of time. I and I have one other comment about, uh, it was Canon Mac, is that correct? That is correct. <coughs> okay. uh, the roof that you did at Canon Mac, is it very similar yeah. or identical to it was, actually it was pretty identical. It was, it was uh, the same insulation actually. And we removed and replaced. There was some wet areas up there that was moved the scan, the thermal scan done, and the contractor uh, removed that, that area, replaced it with the insulation, totally the height of the back, and reattached it and applied it. Applied it. And there would be no problem if any members of the board or the administration would want to go to Canon Mac. I don't think there would be any. I think, you know, I, I can give you this information. Uh, or you, I'm sure you know it. Mac. Uh, yeah. I would encourage the board not to look at a roof that just went on. We are going to look at a roof over and look at one that's been down for 10 years. You know, have, get a reference for something that's a roof over that's the same type of roof over that's been down for 10 years. And then call that person and see if they have trouble. You know, a new roof is, you know, when you just put it down, you know, and what issues they might have. I'll say this again. I, you know, it's always better to have the roof off, there's no doubt. I just feel, you know, I've, we've been, I've been down here now since my fourth trip, and I'm trying to help the school district. And, and, you know, at some point I feel like I'm, you know, not. I just feel like I'm very defensive all of a sudden. And it's, uh, I, I, I should watch. I'm a little hard. I'm concerned about the time frame. We keep pondering uh, the rooms and the way we want to do. We need the time frame on it. Before you know it's going to be August and school needs to begin again. What's the time frame for this? And we can't keep waiting. What would you say your time frame is? The time frame would be, you, you know, you, 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 you uh, have to be out to the contractor and we can start. Uh, can this be done while school's in session? Pardon me? This can't be done while school's in session. Would you need like an evening? Well, the tear off, I would say, afternoon. for sure not. Um, the roof that we did at Wyvenville off the Canon Mac, it was in session when they did it. Now, this would be a little bit different because we are uh, adding insulation, so there would be some noise um, because it would be can be fast the insulation back. So, I'm, I'm not sure what the disruption would be. Problem. What's the total time frame? What would be the total time frame? Uh, you know, weather related. Uh, Worst case scenario. Not all the terror. Not all the terror. Not all the terror. Yeah. What's the time frame for Canada? Well, they, that, that was done probably you know, three weeks. So the whole room? Depending on the weather. Yeah, you know, again, this would probably take a little longer than the end of the I just think we need some kind of guarantee no matter what we do, this is going to be ready to school to begin. It would. I, I, you know, again, if you did it in the school went out, uh, I think it's a timing thing. There's other, there's other projects still going on. I also put in the packet um, a reference for the contractor who the pricing was in there. It's, it's, it's a free reference. It's probably three or four million dollars worth of work he has done. Down this way and across, across you know, the western Pennsylvania. So he's a very um, um, good contractor, very, you know, uh, he, he, I wouldn't bring anybody down here who wouldn't be. And, and that's, the, that's the one you can post on. You get the right contractor, you can work with you, and that's what we want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
But the more we talk, the more confused I become. I'm serious, I, 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 think, I think at this point, you know, we need to decide if we're going to go with who's going to tear off the roof or the roof over. Yeah. Can you guys say something just so everybody's clear? <coughs> Don't hesitate. Is Venucci or the fellows from Carlisle correct me? But when you're pricing this, you're really pricing two components. One is the kind of roof, and therefore who the manufacturer is. But you're also pricing the installer. Right. So when you say, are there going to be other people bidding, it's really they're bidding on their labor cost, is what's really occurring. They're quoting on their labor cost. The system's going to cost X dollars, be it Carlisle or a garland roof or whatever. It's, it's the installation component that comes into play as well. If Garland doesn't install, Carlisle doesn't install. So the price you give us for a roof over, once again the roof, that includes the installation. Correct. has those But you said the, the that's change their, from that's their estimate. the market to Abadra is going to have a big difference on what the price is. I can probably have that for quite a bit. Now, right. you're, you're, you're in. Your installation component, how did you arrive at that number that you gave us to pay? Well, I, I have a, we have a company that does it. We bought the roof number one. We, we had drawings. We did a, a papered layout of it. And then the components of the installation were compiled and gave us a total. Okay, okay. But, but what I mean is when you gave them a cost for the contractor to install it, what was that based on? Them looking at your specs and giving you an estimate? Yes. Okay, and that company came from where? Is that, were they the co star contractor? They were the co star contractor. I brought them down initially and I met uh, they and uh, Jeremy from school initially. And that's the contract that we, you know, from the beginning, that's who we have been dealing with. Now, okay. If you don't want to do co-stars, you would go out for bid. If you choose a Carlisle roof, you would go out for bid. The specs would be what Carlisle says the specs have to be, and contractors bid. The, the, the difference between that and, and co-stars is now you could end up with a contractor who maybe isn't most qualified, but he's, he'll be low. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, and then, yeah. You, then you end up with you know, that's the, that's the whole process of the Coastars. It, it gives you the best of both worlds. Because Coastars is just negotiable. And, you know, I'm not saying this number would be negotiable or not. Maybe, you know, with a contractor, that, that would be between two and a um, half. Or if we get more contractors involved to come down and look at this and, and, and propose a quote for you, we can do that too. <coughs> so it's just a matter of uh, your company. What you, what you decide to do is either tear off, 20 year, 30 year, of the parking layout. Either okay. way, the numbers are substantially less no. than the parking layout. Now, if, if, if it would be a Carlisle system, you guys only allow certain contractors to actually install, correct? Right. They've got to be um, certified by you guys right. based upon their, their performance and skill level right. and training. Right. They, they know your material. Yes, we're going to bring down you know, qualified contractors <clears throat> to make sure you get the best performance and you deal with the Is that just if we go post or if we bid it and would it also be people that they, they possibly would bid that, um, but not necessarily they're, you know, that, you know again, you don't, you don't know what you're going to get if it's going to be a little bit. But, but I think what she's asking, if I'm wrong, would we be able to say specificity-wise, if we're doing a Carlisle system, you have to be an approved Carlisle installed? Yes. Correct. That's what you mean. Okay. Right. So if we go the bid route and specify that, then we're not going to get some form of company that you've not approved? Well, <clears throat> no. Uh, a flat-body company is not going to be a Carlisle 
See, typically if you would go to a bid group, you would hire a company like us. Right. And we would specify, we normally will specify the same group, you know, Carlisle group, Firestone group, first group, they, they're all the same material, they're all going to put on the same system, they all have similar warranties, so you're getting competition in the material, and then you get competition, competition in the bid because of the contract. So the CoStar's products program kind of cuts out that opportunity to bid those. You can do that yourselves, but it's difficult for you to do that. You're a school board, you know. So you don't write to them, so you don't bid jobs. So, you know, they come to you and pitch the product. I was just going to say the contractor that you can get information on the contractor that we asked to put the bid together. He's one of our best installers. And we did tell them the you know, the sensitivity of what, what's going on in the school. And, and we feel pretty comfortable that he did give you a very good price. And, and on the tear off, if the insulation changes to, a, to an average from a minimum uh, R30, it, it would improve from that, as Joe said. I, I, think, I think we can all agree that for Wednesday night, we need to decide whether we're going to go with a roof over or a complete tear off with a new price for Wednesday based on the average instead of the minimum hard. Okay, so for, for Wednesday night board, you know, we're gonna have on the agenda to vote on whether or not we're going to do the complete tear off with a new roof or a roof over. And from that point we can select a company for, uh, to go through co-stars to get this ball rolling because if we wait any longer and you keep passing the next month, we're gonna be way behind the eight ball to get the work started and done. Um, you know, for, for yeah, the school's out. And one more thing, Mr. Craig, I mean, we, and I mentioned this last time, but you we, we all, we want design professional to all those parts. We, we heard that, and I said that last time too, uh, to you and the board. So, um, most definitely, you could be involved with those parts, and, and you could put, you know, again, but you, I think you did a nice job here, and it's not going to lose your job, and I, I think they appreciate that. So, I, I think, I think you, we can definitely, you want to be part of that? Yeah, we, that. we're not interested in being part of the department. You know, our company can get involved with the service. It's just we were asked to give our biggest benefit. But the saying, the saying that you said you won't be competitive. I, that's totally wrong. What's that? That you won't be competitive. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that if they want to be competitive with co-stars, they can ask you for a price from co-stars. Firestone's a co-star group, and first co a co-star group. And so, they were like, that's similar. So they could ask all of, which was what this list was attempting to do, give you the opportunity to talk to Barber, to talk to Barlow, to talk to, you're allowed to talk to them. You know, it's different than a public bid. There's no non-collusion affidavit that you signed or anything. You're allowed to talk to each company. You're allowed to decide who you want, and you're allowed to decide what contract you want as long as they are certified closer contract. So the fact of the matter is we're not a rich school district. And if we have a line in the world, I think the, the complete new book would, would be fantastic and amazing. And I'd be the first to jump on that. But I, I'm at the point where I'm voting no to pay extracurricular coaches and extracurricular because we're going to find ourselves or we're already there pinching pennies to, to try to meet our budget. I, I, based on, I mean, Carlisle, seems to be an extremely reputable company. I don't think that they're going to put their reputation at risk by telling us that the roof over is something that is workable and doable unless they really believe that. And for the significant amount of savings that we would reap, I would, I would go for the, um, for the roof over. So that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts also. I'll have that on the agenda for Wednesday night. And, uh, we could also select a company Wednesday night, correct, too, right? Well, I don't know how far you want to go to discuss potential installers who are approved for the particular system and or on co-stars. There's more than one contractor installed. Correct? I'm correct on that? Yeah, I, I, I just bring you know, again, I 
and I, I, they did for the original on the, on the layover overlay. Um, he did you know, the original body number I did um, tell you. It, he did uh, hit put that number in that close to the and then it is reduced from the original body number by a fair amount. I'd like to thank you guys for putting a lot of time in this sure. to come yeah. to all these meetings. And, and again, and, and moving forward, no matter if, if this project goes away or not go this way, we still like to be involved with the school issue. And if you'd like us to come back and evaluate some of your other groups, we definitely do that for you. But no charge. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Thank you once again. And moving on, I, I did neglect to move to my elementary principals. I have Dr. Witt. Any questions for Dr. Witt um, with George Plow? Uh, Mrs. Rosie Smithfield. Mrs. Baker, A.O. Wilson. I have one, excuse me, Mr. Baker. Mrs. Rosie, uh, where are you at? Since Mr. Dunham and I was up there at the school, after we got all that rain, yes. has it gotten any worse? Library, the, the one darker spot there in the cafeteria. Okay. Mrs. Bezak is acting principal of Friendship Hill. Any questions for Mrs. Bezak? I have no question for Mrs. Bezak. I do have um, a concern in general. Um, given the fact that we've lost um, two outstanding principals in the last few months, um, I would like to see the, the board move forward with doing some type of exit or exit interviews. And if we can do it for the two people that recently left, um, but I think that it would be a good idea to move forward if we can have some type of interview to see uh, you know, what our strengths were, what our weaknesses were, what the motivations were for leaving. Um, and that way we can learn from the experience and, and maybe uh, do better in certain areas. That's good to be useful for people who are retiring or resigning. Resigning. Mrs. Pizak, what does it mean the discipline issues have been minimal? Are we talking uh, student? Are we talking employee? Students. Students. Relative to my role up there and how you've been there for the time that I have been. Um, uh, you know, pretty much, there haven't been a lot of discipline issues. So most of it has been just directly related to special ed placements and, and meetings with parents regarding that, um, some attendance issues. But uh, the discipline itself has been minimal. Um, pretty much just what I did thus far was finished up their teacher evaluations in order to complete a form that required to stay um, its due. Um, on, and I submitted on behalf of the district in regard to all the information that the uh, principal submitted to me. So it was important to be up there and to fill some shoes until we determine what's going to happen there in the future with that building and as far as administration. Um, you know, it's been fine thus far. It's a little bit, um, <coughs> it, it takes a little bit of pull because there's some things that I have to do federally, you know, that I'll come back and do whenever you know, I'm done there. But it's, um, I mean, it's okay now. We are going to obviously open up interviews, so full position. But, um, the teachers, though, um, across the board, um, all staff have been giving it the third, fourth, fifth, 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 it's that time of year to the middle of the year benchmark assessments. They're giving those right about now. Um, we are embarking on a, on a uh, program with the middle schools um, in the intermediate year with this Entra Ed. I listed that in my um, report, and it is regarding an entrepreneurship program that we are going to implement at both middle schools. We have a team of teachers that are going to go down to the IU and get the initial training and bring it back. And that way, on the entrepreneurial component of the career readiness standard, it's kind of difficult um, at that level to, to um, uh, work on and to um, give kids an example of that. So what it is is this program that gives these teachers a form or a bag of tricks to use within instruction. And both of them still have a couple ideas that they're going to do that they currently are doing that they can apply to entrepreneurial. So 
so those are just some of the things that, and in, in addition, um, I do have some teachers going to Brownsville um, at the end of next week to um, take a look at uh, one of the math series that have, um, we've narrowed it down. I do want them to go down and take another look at one of the one series in Brownsville they just purchased it. Um, and they have an opportunity, Brownsville's working collaboratively with us, and getting some subs to the teachers can sit and talk even after they, they view some of the hands-on instruction that they'll be able to observe in that, um, looking at that particular program. So we do have the book um, choice down to two. Back. And Mr. Quisco, um, Mason Town Elementary, and also a special ed director. Any questions for Mr. Quisco? Okay. Um, Mr. Belzik, financial. Yes, I'd like to update the board on the uh, Sheriff sale from Bay County. We received in the uh, mail last week the listing for 2012 delinquent uh, tax notices. That amount that uh, they kind of will be forwarding to us is about $14,000. We've got a list of all the parcels, but we have not received a check yet, and we expect that from in the next couple of weeks. So that will take care of 2012, and I guess they're working year by year. Uh, in the packet that I handed out tonight, we're was a little bit better summary and a couple graphs on the budget process. Due to Act 1 administration, and I think a good idea for every district, because it leaves all options open up until the end of June, uh, is to approve a preliminary budget at this time of year. Um, it's earlier this year than in years past, because this is an election year, and that moves everything back about a month. So the board has uh, information in it for our preliminary budget that shows the revenues, the estimated expenditures at this point, and some options that will, uh, what, what will happen to your fund balance. Whether you go with a no increase up to an index, or up to, in my estimate, because I don't know what we would be able to file for, for exceptions yet, but I think I had another meal on top of the um, maximum index amount to see what the scenario would be. And just to illustrate the effect on the fund balance for you. Um, that, that number, of course, for us to be in compliance with Act 1, that is on the agenda for us to approve this Wednesday. And I call it a very early preliminary budget, so that's, that's there for you. Uh, and as far as the financing options, we had in our maintenance meeting this week several issues that came to light. And with us talking about Smithfield and not knowing what we're going to do, we started having some things that uh, may be a need uh, for us to take care of within the time frame of looking if we're going to finance this through a bond issue, the Smithfield roof through a bond issue in mind. Uh, some of the items were, in addition to Smithfield roof, was the HVAC at Smithfield. If we're going to pursue a bond, then we want to add that amount of money to that financing option and bring financing of what we currently have. Increase our borrowing. Our parking lots uh, brought to our attention that um, we have some, we are in need of some repairs and maybe some total tear out and replenish in our parking lot and our drive throughs throughout the district. Uh, one of the brought up this week was also a stage curtain that I think it's south. We are in need of some repairs and uh, from what I understand, when maintenance called about having it repaired, they said you, it's not worth throwing your money after the So you have to buy a new stage curtain. There, those are not uh, very, in, they're not inexpensive. They're, they, they are very costly. Um, we have various boiler repairs. Some of these items could be done with the balance of our capital reserve money and capital projects fund, which is about between 55 and 60. I apologize, I don't have the exact amount of money, uh, but the bank statements are really lacking. There are some uh, order repairs that we have to do at Plava, at the high school, in the field house that would add value and life to the, the um, 
polluters that we currently have there. It's not a large amount. I'm guessing right now that it's about between thirty and forty thousand dollars. Might be a little higher once we get into it. But these are just some of the issues that surface when we're looking at that. Uh, we have several uh, tubes and floors that have to be refurbished. They haven't been refurbished in I'm guessing for twenty some years. Uh, the build up on there now it's it's starting to peel off. Uh, that's some of the things we have. Middle schools. I think it's middle schools. Yeah, both both middle schools and gym floors, it's been over twenty years since they've been taken down to the hardwood. And last year there were big chunks of the finish that were peeling off. You know, you're looking at a chance, you know, of a student playing on that floor, you know, cassette or extra trick or what have you, if that breaks off and they go to stop and it and that finish peels off, it's liable to create an injury. You know, so speaking to Mr. Todak and Mr. Chapman, it's been um, at least twenty years since those have been taken down to the bare wood and um, sand it down and redone. So uh, you know, we don't have to do them both this summer, but I would recommend you know doing them uh, as soon as possible. If you do one this summer and one the next, do them both, and that would be up to the board. And then I, I think that if we're looking at borrowing money, that's why these these projects are surfaced. Uh, not to say that uh, you know we're out there looking for things to do. We're just saying, you know what, if you could do this borrowing now, that would be the kind of borrowing this money. You have three years to spend it. And um, in relation to Mr. Dunn's question earlier about other roof projects throughout the district, we did have um, about a year or so ago a roof plan for the district and the roof at AG South there was a new roof put over top of the gymnasium. The rest of the building with um, the roof is in good condition. They recommended that if you within the next couple of years if we did a restoration, it would add 15 to 20 years to the life of that roof. And that's a fraction of the cost of doing a roof over or a new roof. So that's something that I had talked to Mr. Todak and Mr. Chapley about when, when we had met. And, uh, and I think the time frame you're looking is if you want to do a restoration versus a larger project, you would, have to, you would need to do that within the next three years. Um, and that you know, would save the district uh, significant money in the long run. So that's part of what we have discussed with other things that would be taken care of. In, in the last piece that we kind of discussed and brainstormed was the uh, outdoor equipment, you know, like, uh, pizza bar facilities, power motors, uh, riding motors, NPRs, things of that nature that uh, if you're going to borrow money and within three to five years this equipment is going to be a very big burden on your operating budget, that would be the way to pursue changing and getting rid of it. And we don't have a number on that. I mean, I would say probably from what they told me, one or two tractors in the district. But until we look at it, we will be telling you not for sure. But, the, but those are the things that looking out two, three, four, or five years to try and say if we're going to borrow money, um, borrow money to take care of these things down the road. Will they change? I'm sure they will. We, we had also looked at an option versus, you know, we met with uh, John Deere, who we buy a lot of our equipment from, versus <coughs> buying it outright. We looked at a lease plan. It would be a three-year lease. You turn the equipment in and get new equipment every three years. You know, looking at that option, it didn't seem to uh, benefit the district very much because you're basically buying it over a three-year period and you can either choose to keep it or turn it back in for trade value on new equipment. And looking at that with Mr. Belchick in our maintenance one and two leads, um, we feel that what we have been doing is purchasing it outright with the Coast Guard's price is probably better for the district at this time. What are we doing to improve our district's credit? I mean, as we paid out this debt on the last set of bonds that we sold, um, will our credit rate be improved 
from Hengel. Well, I just can't see the number. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, part, part of when you look at that, it's not just your outstanding amount, it's when they hit zero. Yeah. Yeah. It involved the closeout of something called swaption. Pennsylvania required another separate individual. Pennsylvania law required another separate individual to recommend with the investment banking firm, Mr. McKay, came up with was a good deal um, for the district. You don't have any swaptions involved anymore, so you don't need that extra entity anymore. It's it's you, the, the issuer, the school district, and, and the investment banker as to what would be the best deal. And it turns into more what their discount rate is. In other words, with their if something's a hundred dollars, they're buying it from you for ninety-five dollars, and then they're selling it out in the open market, or maybe they'll buy it for ninety-seven dollars. That's where some of the competition will come into play. Probably the other thing I'd like to remind the board that um, I know in the past, and I've been doing this for a while, that uh, districts, when they borrow money, they anticipate how much money would be local and how much would be funded to the state. That plan fund process is still not there. Not there. So, yeah, that is not a change. We would be doing this on our own. Yeah, from our discussions, a year ago, maybe, um, about school buildings. Um, the plan con still, although they have changed the plan con law, and many feel they've streamlined it to bring it up into the real world at this point, the 21st century, they still are not funding for it. New plan con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like that. There's a touch show in New York uh, and many others. And, if you, and also, anybody that's interested in worrying about transportation, that, that no cost to the district includes transportation help in these kids. So it's not really here for Thank you, Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden, technology. Yes, I just would like to point out a couple things that were noted in my board update. Um, in regards with E-rate, I've been working with Kristen at the IU on figuring our numbers for 2020. As I've stated, um, we have $346,875 available to us. In order to receive that money, we would have to obviously spend our discounted share, which I figure to be around $95,000. Um, this money has to be used by the end of this year or we will lose it. Um, being money is the object, obviously you don't wanna have to spend more, um, but I've been talking with Vince and we're trying to figure out you know, a couple different ways that we could possibly make it happen. Um, we do have a few buildings that are in need of, of some technology updates. <coughs> Friendship Hill, Smithfield and South are at the top of the list. They're switching and that building is approximately 14 years old right now, so it's, um, it's due. So again, um, you know, spending 95,000 to receive $346,000 worth of, of funding is, is a pretty good deal, I think. Um, and again, I'm gonna continue to work with Vince to try to see if, you know, uh, capital projects or, you know, working that in with a bond or however we can do it to try to make it happen. But just wanted you guys to be aware of it. Um, also, I've noted on here the Pete and C Conference, which is the Pennsylvania Educational Technology Expo and Conference. It's typically in Hershey every year. They're renovating Hershey, so they have moved the show to Pittsburgh this year. And I thought this would be a good year to try to take advantage of the close location, therefore without needing um, hotels or expensive travel bills, maybe send our technology uh, teachers, some of them. I've talked with Mrs. Bezak and we came up with a couple of folks, uh, representation from the elementaries and middle schools. So um, the cost per person to attend for a two day pass is $210. And then there would be whatever travel um, <coughs> would be necessary. I'm looking into possibly using a school van, although the trouble is parking a van that size downtown um, is kind of a problem. I'm trying to see if there's anywhere that can accommodate that. But I just wanted to uh, bring that to your attention to see if, if we could possibly get that on the agenda for Wednesday to uh, send some of our teachers to that expo, which is coming up in February. Chris, what kind of numbers have you been talking about? Uh, I think I had five people on my list. Yeah, I think there was there was five. There was three, three from the elementaries, three from the elementaries, one from middle, and one from high school. When you say Chris, the end of the year, are you talking about the end of the school year or the end of the year? The end of the calendar year, December thirty first, twenty twenty. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Thank you. Uh, transportation, Mr. Farmer. <coughs> As many of you are aware, we did have an accident, a bus accident, Friday afternoon. We had a bus on Collier Road <coughs> back into uh, over two mailboxes and a uh, fire plug, I call it, but a fire hydrant. So, uh, we did want to discuss that more in the I do have a question. There has been some concern expressed on social media that the parents were not notified. Um, were the parents not notified? That's correct. We tried to follow the protocol and dismiss the students before I was able to arrive at the accident. So I had to uh, view the tape this morning, take a snippet of that tape in order to identify who the students were and then develop the list they called them. Uh, everyone was called by one the other day. Is it, isn't it standard protocol for a bus driver to, we've had problems 
before, okay, with with this same issue. Is training not being done to the bus drivers on protocol when an accident happens, or do they just simply uh, blow it off and don't uh, follow through? <coughs> Actually, I, I touch upon it every year at their summer startup meeting, but I am already scheduled uh, as a result of this incident. I'm going to attend their safety meeting on January 28th and give them a refresher on four topics. Is the bus contractor not responsible to, to do uh, that as uh, part of the orientation at the beginning of the year with their drivers? Yes, it was done. I, how do we know that if, if we didn't even know who the students were until one weekend day or sometime today, how do we know even that the proper people were picking up the kids and the kids that were getting that were getting home? I mean, that seems like even if it was a minor accident, it should have been a highest priority to check with the parents, even if it was just a, 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 a text to say, hey, you know, minor accident, nobody was hurt, you know, more details later. So so what what broke down in the system that that didn't happen immediately Friday? Not knowing which parents to, I guess we could have did a call call of the uh, announcement to every parent on that bus. So, so who was, so who was it just left, and I, and I get that when that happened, you know, the, the bus driver, there's not, it's not like there's somebody riding with a bus driver right there, I don't know, but so was it just a free-for-all in terms of who took these children then? Uh, as soon as the accident happened, before they were even pulled off the road, uh, from the video, you can see uh, students calling their parents on their cell phone. Was it elementary school kids? No, this is middle school. This is middle school, okay. So I believe all the parents were there within like 12 minutes of the accident happening because they were all very local to the accident. How many kids were on the bus? 12. 12. Mr. President, are these kids technically in the they're not technically an hour employees, are they? No, they're not our, well, the way the school code works, um, they are not our employees, but before a driver works for one of our um, company, for our company, we have to approve the driver, but all we're approving is that they have submitted proof of their clearances, physicals, things like that. So I guess my follow-up question that would be, is that any follow-up at all after that accident? Is that appropriate executive session or is that open session topics? Um, because we approve the driver, I think you could discuss that in executive session. I don't believe you should be discussing the actual driver. Although I'm sure there are people who have a But I don't want to see us get attacked. I just want to make sure it's a good okay. Yes, I think the fact that we ultimately approve them, even though know, they're there for you, makes a difference. But in any case of transportation, I can't think of any other class that fits that. Yes, Mr. Carter, I have another question in regards to the uh, uh, buses and uh, safety factors. Am I under the right impression that you have a GPS system that tracks every one of these buses? That's correct. As far as speed? Yes, sir. I've had numerous people call me, a couple recently, and in the past, several from my area complaining about the speed and I have personally followed buses that were some empty, others that had students on them that were violating the speed. On the Club Supply Road, on the College uh, Avenue Road, uh, and on Route 21. Now, is there a record? Of, is there a recorded record of that from day one of, of speed complaints? None of, of the. You said you have a system where you can track those day to day. Correct. And that is stayed, that. That stays in the computer for one year. Exactly. So in other words, I can come in there and take a look at that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Any other questions for Mr. Parham? Mr. Parham, we'll stick around for executive session, please. Yeah. Uh, security, school safety, chief. I have <coughs> nothing to the board right now, but I will probably need a couple minutes in the exec session to uh, talk about some security issues. Okay. And uh, also, I uh, wanted to know to put it on the agenda that we had discussed increasing the sub custodian rate to $100 per day for retired custodians only to try to get some um, <coughs> substitutes on our list. But we do have a lot of good custodians that have retired um, that may come back. I've talked to a few that said, you know, if you raise the rate to where they were getting $100 per day, that they would consider coming back subbing. And right now it's very difficult to find subs for our custodians uh, when they're off. Um, right now we're trying to utilize overtime uh, to get uh, positions filled. Uh, the present rate is based uh, per, per hour. I want to say it's uh, $10 an hour when we raise to two and four for a sub custodian. And that would just be for if they're a yeah. retired custodian. Okay. Okay, and uh, there is a need for executive session for personnel. A few weeks ago, I had shared um, on my Facebook page uh, was recommended steps to fill a vacancy, and this is actually something we shared on Facebook by uh, Leanne Fran and Capaldi, and I think she took it from some Michigan website, <coughs> website but it is a seven part or seven steps uh, to follow when there is a board vacancy, and I know I'm just passing this out now, but I was hoping maybe for the February meeting that we could put this on the agenda to, to adopt this. And it goes to very specifically and does a good job about talking about it, announcing the vacancy, posting it on social media and on the district website, letters, etc. That there in the open meeting, that there's an interview process that obviously would be a public meeting. And that following those interviews, there's a rating system. And uh, I would hope that it would be anonymous, but that you, you rate your first and your second choice and that each your first choice gets two points, your second choice gets one point, and then there is uh, the board president will tally that up and make a recommendation. Uh, I think moving forward, it would be wise if we have a specific policy in place that when we have a board vacancy, um, that at least there's some kind of procedure that we can fall back on on how to move forward. So I would just ask that, that anybody is interested to look at that and maybe we'll get on the agenda with that. The only thing that comes to mind in video is where the pencil ranking would allow the rating to be. Oh, because okay, so we would have to indicate. We may have to indicate how, how each candidate is rated by what? participant, board member, or member of the public, whoever's involved in it. I have no problem with that. My only issue is that maybe that it would be, um, that it might be easier for someone who was on the right. Oh, there's, yeah. it definitely would be easier, I think. Uh, but that's something we'd have to check because that's not your actual vote to do the rate. Um, one thing before we break for executive session, um, looking ahead, you mentioned February, our work session falls on President's Day, and unless we have a school cancellation, as a holiday where there's no school. So we want to keep the work session on President's Day, uh, even if there's no school and it's not a makeup day, or would the board rather move it to Tuesday and have the work session on Tuesday and Wednesday would be the uh, regular voting meeting. So thank you. Would it, would it make a difference to the, uh, to the staff that appears? I'm okay with it. Okay. We don't have to decide that tonight. I just want to let you know that, you know, it's scheduled uh, the third Wednesday of the month, the preceding Monday is the work session on <coughs> President's Day. So uh, if the weather holds out like it is and we don't have any snow cancellations, then uh, there will not be school that day. And we can still hold the work session regardless. But uh, so think about that and we can decide that before um, February, August. Okay? 
Okay, there is a need for executive session for personnel. Um, and a potential legal And a potential legal fight. Okay. Thank you all for attending this month's work session. Have a safe uh, night, safe travels out. Thank you.